Hello friends and well-wishers, Atlas again. I'm still vaguely sick, so that's why I sound weird, but uh, today I have for you a Spike Brothers deck profile. Now, let me just preface this by saying I'm not good at Spike Brothers. I got the idea and how to play this from Living Proof, who is a good friend of ours, and you should check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description below. So just, if you're better at Spike Brothers than me, shut up. All right, let's get started. So uh, for the starter, we have uh, Mecha Trainer. So if you have played Kagero, uh, it's the exact same skill. You can Counter Blast and retire him, search your deck for up to one greater or less Spike Brothers card, which is amazing. Um, I'm glad Bushiroad didn't come to their senses before printing this card, because otherwise uh, all of our other starters are just uh, bubkiss compared to this. Um, you can search Stride Fodder so you can get the correct ride. You can search Hail Triggers to uh, get yourself to GB8 faster, you can search any grade one. I don't need to quit, I, I don't need to keep sending this thing's praises, it's good. Um, four copies of Giant Rising Great Star. So this is the new grade three we got in GBT 13. And uh, a lot of people think it's bad and you're wrong, and here's why. So he's got Charge, and uh, the way Charge works is when a card is called by an effect, you can have it become charging. So it's a state like in Gorge or Hollow. And then, uh, at the end of the battle that a charging rear guard attacked, it goes to the bottom of the deck. Um, so he's got charge, and then also, you can counterblast one, choose a card from your hand, put it into your soul. When it's placed on van or rear, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to one grade two or less with the charge ability, call it to an open R, shuffle your deck, and then if he's charging, uh, great star, uh, he gets 3k until end of turn. And then also on vanguard, GB2, at the end of each turn... If the number of your rear guards is two or less, choose one of your rear guards and you may put it into your soul. If you do, draw a card. So, this thing is a really good rear guard because if you're if he gets pulled out by something, he can pull something else out with him. And then on top of that, um, the second skill, because it's at the end of each turn, this happens after your unlocks. So if you're playing against Link Joker and they made you like you know chaos call things from hand, you can just shove something in the soul and get a draw off it. Um, it also means you can kind of help recruit your resources, uh, thanks to a grade 2 you'll see later. Um, and then on top of that, uh, yeah, he doesn't have a stride skill, but all of your strides call things anyway, so what do you, what do you need the stride skill for? So, he's, he's your new main grade 3. Um, that said, I still run one copy of the old Rising. Um, why do I do this? Because I'm a very unlucky person, and I want to ensure th the max amount of writing the correct thing. Yes, I can search out Acrobat Verity to, you know, get the correct grade 3, but usually what ends up happening with me is I'll, like, I'll be on grade 2, and that would be the turn to search the grade 3, and, or, you know, search Verity, you know, get the grade, uh, get the correct grade 3. But what happens is, on my grade 3 turn, I'll draw into the incorrect one, so I just, I want to tip the scales a little bit more in my favor. Um, you can cut them if you want, but it still is uh, GB2. Uh, you put a card from hand to soul when he attacks a vanguard. Uh, you can pay the cost if you do search your deck for a card, call it to an open R and shuffle. Um, and then that, along with his stride skill, which is uh, when he strides, your vanguard gets counterblast one, choose a card from hand, put it into your soul. When uh, this unit attacks a vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do search your deck for a card, call it to an open R, shuffle your deck, and gets plus 5k. So it's. Uh, bo both skills are basically the same thing. Um, it's also got Rising in the name, so all of your Rising support cards uh, work with that. Um, he doesn't have Charge, though, which is why I didn't do, like, 4-4. Four, four. So, yeah. Um, we also run three copies of Jelly Beans. And, uh... What? Oh, yeah. So, uh, it's a Grade 3 from Forever Ago. You can, from your hand, you can put it on top of your deck. We have a Spike Brothers Vanguard. Search your deck for up to one Grade 2 or less Spike Brothers with Dudley in its name and uh, put it in your hand. So, this allows you to search for Dudley cards, and this is not a Dudley deck, but there are two cards in here that you want in your hand as soon as possible, and uh, being able to use this to search is freaking fantastic. Um, so yeah, I have it at three. I've seen people, like, I've seen people run Hive Maker still, or, uh, like, if you want to cut the old rising for like another copy of this or like one hive maker feel free spike brothers is such a flexible deck 
that you can pretty much do whatever you want and you'll probably be okay. So, uh, one copy of Dudley Monty. So it's a 10K vanilla with Dudley in its name, which means I can search the 10K vanilla to ride, which is awesome. Because you're like, all right, I'm playing against, you know, OTT. I don't want to get hit by, like, three Cocots in a row. On my grade one turn, I'll send a Jelly Beans back, get this, and then guarantee your 10K vanilla ride. So, yeah, it's solid. Um, three copies of Prompt Cheetah. So this is the thing I was talking about with uh, Rising Great Star earlier. He's got Charge, and then uh, when he's charging and attacks a Vanguard, you get 5K. And then at the end of the battle, you can Soul Blast, bind to him, and then call him back rested. So normally this would be awful. But the cool thing is that you can use this A to, um, like, keep stuff around against, uh, or like, uh, with, uh, Bull Power Aggregus, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, but it also means that you can, if he's the last attack of your turn, you can bind him, call him rested, and then at the end of the turn, you can just shove him in there, get a draw off of Great Star. So you can actually kind of plus in Sprite Brothers, which is, like, unheard of. Um, two copies of Heavewees. So he's got charge, and then when he's charging, he gets 10k. Um, so it's just a big fat beat stick, and sometimes you need a big fat beat stick. It's just how it is. Uh, two copies of Laser Blackguard. So got charge. Uh, GB1, if he's charging, he gets uh, 5k, so that's pretty neat. And then also, um, let's see, uh, GB1, Counter Blast 1, choose card from your hand, put it in your soul. When this charging unit is put into your deck from R, you may pay the cost, if you do. Search your deck for up to one non-grade 2 card with the charge ability. Call it to an open R, other than the rear guard that this unit was on, and shuffle your deck. I don't know why they had to put this, like, arbitrary restriction on it, but that's Bushi for you. Um, the cool thing with this is, A, he can hit Vanguard on his own, like Prompt Cheetah, so that's cool. But the big thing is that after he goes back in deck, you can then get use him to get uh, Rising Great Star, who in turn can then be used to get another grade one, such as Fake Bomber, which we'll get to later, um, which means you can get another attack out of that, and then also Fake Bomber can get you another attack out of that. So this thing allows you to just extend your attacks, which is awesome. Just great. Um, it's a little weird to work around, but you get used to it after a while. Two copies of Mayhem Tiger, because why would you not be running this card? He's got Charge, and then uh, GB1... Uh, when your opponent puts unit on guard circle, when he's attacking a vanguard, you can soul blast if he's charging, and then you can retire a grade two or less guardian. So the way guarding works in vanguard is that when you guard with things, they go on one at a time. So unless the opponent uses a G guard or perfect guards, because the skill says that the cannot be hit activates instantly. Uh, unless they have a perfect guard or a G guard, as long as you have soul, you can keep retiring their guardians, which means that it's really, really funny on the GB8 turn because your soul gets absolutely gigantic. Um, this thing is a great card. Um, you know, you used to run it at four, but because of how uh, you can search basically anything in Sprite Brothers at any given time, you can run this weird wonky lineup and it works out pretty well. So, uh, yeah. One copy of Lethal Forward. Um, so this is a tech slot for quite literally anything you want. You want to run a third Black Guard? Cool. Want to run a fourth Prompt Cheetah? Cool. Want, want to run, you know, a third Heave Weave's fine. But, uh, I just like the threat that this thing serves. So he's got Charge, and GB1, uh, when he becomes Charging, he gets plus 2k and red text. When he hits a Vanguard, if you have a Vanguard with Rising, read probably all the time, uh, you can, uh, search for a card for... With, that's not him, so you can't keep calling him back and forth. So you search for not lethal forward, call it to rear, open rear, and shuffle. So he's 11k on his own, and uh, you can extend your attacks that way, so you can like hit with him, search Blackguard, attack with Blackguard, do the thing I mentioned with Rising, get more... Like, it's it's an attack extender, and it hits on its own. Great. Um, four copies of Cold-Blooded Advisor Cunning Brain. So he's the new PG. Hang on. <coughs> See? Still dying. Uh, he's uh, PG with charge, which is interesting. And then you can... He's got the PG still, and then also when he's put into your deck from rearguard circle, you can choose up to three cards from your drop zone, bind them face up. 
You choose a unit, and it gets plus 10k until the end of the turn for each face-up uh, cunning brain in the bind zone. So, uh, you want as many charge units as possible in the deck, so the fact that this has it is great. But also, uh, later in the game, you're going to have a lot of uh, cunning brains in the deck, and being able to just call this out, and then after he goes back, you bind a bunch of cunning brains and give your frog raider plus, you know, 30k. It's freaking hilarious. So, love this thing. And it's a rare, which is nice. Um, three copies of Acrobat Verdi. Um, he's the stride fodder. You know, it's a stride deck. Uh, because you run eight grade threes, you can cut it down to two if you really want, because he's searchable by Mecha Trainer. But, um, I think he's... It's just for consistency's sake that I keep the three. Um, three copies of Frog Raider. Oh, Frog Raider. So, uh, GB1, when a unit with the charge ability is placed in the same column as him, uh, due to the effect of one of, the, one of your cards, so basically when you charge something, more or less, uh, if you have a Vanguard with Rising, you stand it. So usually what happens is you're going to attack, give all your triggers to this, and then when you start calling things in front of him, he's just going to keep restanding over and over and over again, which means he's going to get gigantic. So, uh... Yeah, again, this can be searched with Mecha Trainer, which is good, and, um, yeah, it's just a good card. I wouldn't recommend cutting it down to two just because you want to have it around when possible, but shit happens. Three copies of Fake Bomber. So this this wins the award for the best new flavor text of Set 13, which is, it's already common sense that the ball will explode. Awesome. Um, so he's got Charge, and then when he's charging, he gets 5k and Red Text, GB1, Soul Blast 2, when he boosts, if you have a Vanguard Rising, uh, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose a charge from your hand, call it to an open R, and counter charge. So, Soul isn't really a problem in Spike Brothers, so that cost isn't really that steep. Um, on top of that, he helps you get counter charges mid-battle phase, so you can, like, let's say you did the thing I mentioned earlier with Blackguard into Rising into this. You can uh, attack with, um, you know, Rising and this for... 26, because Rising gets 3k, he gets 5k. Call another Blackguard, counter charge, and then they go away. And then you can attack with uh, Blackguard and get a new thing. So it's just, it's it's awesome. Great card. Um, one copy of Air Force Eliza. Again, tech slot. If you want to run a fourth Fake Bomber, fine. Uh, if you want to run, like, I don't know, some other charge unit, but she's got charge and then GB1. Uh, Counterblast 1, at the end of the battle, this unit boosted, a charging unit, you may pay the cost, if you do, bind it, face up, call it to an open R, and if this unit was charging when you did that, it gets plus 2k, and then she puts herself on bottom. So this just lets you extend attacks. Um, one thing that is fun to do, so let's say you go with, like, you know, uh, you call that a field with Picaro, this, plus Prompt Cheetah, you attack for 21, use her to bind Prompt Cheetah, call him back, charge him again, and because he was charging when he did that, uh, Prompt Cheetah is 16, so you do Prompt Cheetah again, and then at the end of the battle you buy and recall him, and then you get the draw at the end. So this is just another way to extend attacks. Um, I have been considering uh, putting a 4th Fate Bomber or 4th Verity, or even another Grade 2, but um, it's uh, it's a fun card to play around with, and you, know, you can do whatever you want. Like, I cannot stake this enough, people. In Spike Brothers, you can pretty much do with what you want. You might not win by doing what you want, but it's really flexible and really fun. It's just really hard to play, because uh, I'm not good at this plan. Um, on to the triggers, we have three copies of Silence Joker and two copies of Liar Lips. So Silence Joker is just a shove and soul on flip of damage. Great, awesome. And then uh, Liar Lips is the Heart Thumb clone for Rising. So she allows you to be aggressive early, like if you draw in a Fraud Raider, call it, what do you care? And then... Attack with that column for 11, and then do the thing for, you know, their crits, they do stuff. Critters that do things are good. Um, and we have five draws, so four copies of Deadly Steamer, and then one vanilla draw of your choosing. Um, so Deadly Steamer, we finally got a freaking Margol clone. Thank God. Um, this deck uses a lot of cards from hand to do things, which means you want as many cards in hand as possible, and the best thing to put in soul everybody knows for costs are draw triggers. So, more, uh, the more draws, the merrier. Um, and then lastly, two stand triggers. So what Devil Watch does is uh, it's got charge, and then 
when he attacks or boosts, if it's charging, you counter charge, soul charge, and he gets 3k. So that's a really flexible card. Um, because Prompt Cheetah works the way it does, there are times where this will go off. The main thing, though, is again for mid battle phase counter charging. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of uh, cards that do things. You really don't care if the Stand Trigger whiffs, because then you can just put it on Fraud Raider, he's going to be restanding by himself anyway. So, it's not a big deal. Um, Lastly, we got four heals. So, the card is called Dudley Cheers Lindsay, which means Jelly Beans can search her, which is hilarious because the point of the deck, if you can, is to get to Hellheart as fast as possible. So now you got two ways to search heals. Awesome. And then her other skill, uh, she's got a skill, which is when, you know, when she's used to call a G Guardian, you can uh, bind two of her from dropping either Counter Charge or Soul Charge. So, uh, heal with the skill, does the thing, is great. Um, let's see, onto the G-Zone. Four copies of Blackhorn King Bullpower Adrius. Um, so, you counterblast, flip a copy of him. When he attacks, you may pay the cost if you do. Choose any number of your rear guards, bind them face up. If you bound three or more, draw, choose up to two cards from your bind zone for each face up card in your G-Zone, and call them to separate open R. So, you have to bind three or more to get the rest of the still. Which is annoying, it would be nice if it was just buy any number, if you bound three draw, then, you know, after you do that, get the calls, but whatever. Uh, Boucher likes to troll. Anyway, so, um, this is a great first strike because it allows you to kind of get resources. On top of that, <coughs> typically what, uh, what you'll do is you'll call a field of charge units, attack with them normally, then attack with Agrigus, and then bind them and call them back so you get another attack out of them. Um... Typically, you're going to, like, if you do this first stride, something's going to get lost in the bind zone. So, if you use Verity to search early, that's probably the thing that's going to get lost out there. Um, sometimes people will just, like, I don't know, like, call it, call, like, an extra grade one, leave it out there. Because you can get it back next turn. Um, you can also do that against Narukami, which is really, really funny. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really solid first stride, and sometimes it comes in handy later game. Um, two copies of Rising Supernova. So, this is honestly just filler space. So, his skill is, uh, you flip a copy of him face up, um, or anything. You flip anything. When he attacks a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose up to the same number of your rear guards as copies of him, and they become charging, so you can artificially charge stuff. And then if four or more rear guards are charging, all of your units get plus 10k to end the turn. So, it's very, very hard to, um, do that, uh... Like, on first stride, there there are ways to do it, and the deck kind of has to be built around it, but honestly, you just do this if you don't have any counter blasts, so you can't, you know, just get a free flip. Um, it is kind of nice, like, if you went early, and, you know, you called rear guards, and then you can kind of artificially charge them and do your other stuff anyway, but it's kind of just filler space right now. <coughs> um... <coughs> Two copies of uh, Dirty Picaro, so this thing's fantastic. GB3, you counter blast two. Uh, cho flip a card in G Zone, anything. Choose a card from your hand, put it in your soul. When he attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do. Search for up to one card from your deck for each face up card in G Zone, and call them separate open art and shuffle. So, this is amazing when you're behind. Oh, Codra blew up my field. I have one, you know, like one card in hand to, after I stride and two open counter blasts, just shit out of field. You get anything you want. That's amazing. Um, I don't really need to sing, sing this thing's praises. It's great. You flip other stuff for it. Like, you're probably not going to flip himself. Like, usually the first one I do is Seabreeze. Um, yeah. Really cool. Uh, let's see. One copy of Hellheart 8 himself. So, he's the GB8. So when your unit attacks, you choose one of your units, and until the end of the turn, it gets 10k and red text, Choose this unit and a card from your hand, put it into your soul. At the end of the battle, that this unit attacked or boosted, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to one card, call it to an open iron shuffle. So, you can keep putting uh, 10k boosts onto your um, Frog Raider over and over. But the big thing here is, as long as you have cards in hand, you can keep getting attacks. And uh, that's just fantastic. So, typically what you're probably going to be doing is, like, even if you have... You know, no cards in hand after calling a field, you go, or like, you know, one or two cards in hand, you can get like 
6, 8, 10 attacks off at gigantic ass numbers. So this is definitely a GB8 worth uh, rushing to, and, uh, you know, it, again, it's awesome. I don't, I don't really need to keep yelling about it. <coughs> um, oh, you also don't have, you, the units don't have to be charging to do that, so you can, like, all right, I'm going to throw down this draw trigger, attack for 14, put it in salt, like, it's awesome. Um, one copy of Sea Breeze, because it's a, it's a stride deck. You use it to stride. Um, usually it's your flip target for, uh, Picaro or your GS's target, though. Um, for G-Guards, we run 6, because A, you want options, B, you want to get to GB8 as fast as possible, so, two copies of Varsity Linus here, so can't even interference Terrible Linus. Again, I got the nickname from Living Proof, go check out his channel. Anyway, so, um, you flip a cop, uh, flip, flip a card in G-Zone when you G-Guard with him, so, uh, you... Choose one of your rear guards, and you may put it into your soul if you want to. Uh, and then he also gets, after you do that, 10k until the end of the battle for each of your, uh, every two open circles. So, the maximum you can get is plus 20k shield. But you can get plus 20k shield, that's awesome. 46. Um, so, what's probably going to happen if you, like, search out all those heals, is you're going to be going, like, calling two of these at a time, flipping two at a time, and then when he goes back, that's now four cards in G-Zone. So you can do second stride hell hard eight pretty much very consistently. So good stuff. Um, one copy of Ractomi. Uh, so he's just the drop and draw stride. You run draw triggers. Uh, a big thing in here is that if you have a Link Joker heavy meta, cut out the lethal forward for Poker, and then this is the thing you want to have in G Zone for Poker. So um, I don't really have a lot of Link Joker players in my area. I got a lot of Kagura players, so that's just how it is. But uh, yeah. Decent G-Guard, it's usually a flip target for Linus. Uh, one copy of uh, the original Fire's Collection 1, if you have three or less rear guards, plus 5k shield. Usually a flip target for Linus, but, you know, sometimes you got nothing to put back with uh, the next card. And, uh, yeah, pretty easy to proc. So, lastly, uh, two copies of Durable Barrier Hecaton Gase. Gaius? Yes, whatever. Anyway, so, we got a recycling G-Guard. We didn't even ask for this, but awesome. Uh, his skill is when you g guard with him, choose up to three cards from your drop zone or soul with different grades and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. And if you put three cards, it gets plus 10k shield to the end of battle. So typically it's just going to be like, all right, draw trigger one and two or something like that. You almost never want to put your heals back because you want to bind them for the unflips and stuff. But uh, it is a solid-ass G-Guard, and... Uh, Juggernaut Maximum Maximum can go eat it. So, yeah, uh, you know, sometimes, like, you know, like if, if you didn't end up surging a bunch of heals at once and you just need a normal G-Guard, this thing helps you put things back in deck that you want. So, yeah, that's the deck. Um, honestly, like, if you have changes you want to make, go for it. It's probably going to make changes by the time this video goes up. But, uh, who knows? It, Spike Brothers is a pretty fun clan to play. It can definitely run with the best of them if you know what you're doing. I cannot stress that enough. It's like Night Rose level hard. So, yeah. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a good night.